Welcome again to our day-to-day -day study of the Apostle Paul's life. We are still considering Paul's second missionary journey, which was a major historical event. Let us take a look at the dissension that took place between Paul and Barnabas. Disputes can arise between friends, but God can turn them into good so that he may be glorified. Stay tuned. This program will be a blessing to your life. Paul and Barnabas went on the second trip to strengthen churches and to deliver the council's decision from Antioch to Asia Minor. They reached a certain point which I consider a decisive one, a point where they had to part ways, but God turned it for his glory. They both agreed that this journey was very important, namely that they should carry the good news to the Gentiles. They were instrumental in bringing unity at the council in Jerusalem, but they disagreed about the selection of the mission team. Barnabas wanted to bring John Mark, his nephew, along on the journey. We know from Acts chapter 4 that Barnabas was known to be a son of consolation or encouragement. He was kind and gentle and liked to give a second chance to those who were around him. According to him, God turns failure into something glorious. Barnabas desired to take John Mark with them to encourage him. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. But Paul did not think it wise to take him along because he had deserted them on the first missionary journey to return to Jerusalem. Ministry and missions were very serious matters to Paul, as serious as military service. He wrote to Timothy, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Second Timothy chapter two, verses three and four. So the Lord's work is similar to a military service. Paul and Barnabas had a sharp argument and after a long discussion, they decided to separate or to part ways. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus because Barnabas was a native of this island. Paul chose Silas to be his partner. The question is, who was right? I would say both were right and both were wrong to a certain extent. Barnabas saw that Mark needed encouragement and support, something he could give him. According to history and the word of God, Mark was a faithful follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Years later, Paul had deep respect for John Mark and his ministry. Toward the end of his life, Paul wrote, Mark is helpful to me in my ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. This shows that Mark was still involved in Paul's ministry. So we must not take seriously this temporary sidestep, but consider the whole picture. God did indeed turn everything to good.
The first thing we have to learn is that the Christian life is not like a puppet show or a dance show where everyone is doing the same moves. Every human being has an independent character, an individual calling and potential. Everyone has his own style in ministry. We are not clones. No one does a thing exactly like his brother. Every human being is unique. You are special. Every viewer is special. Pray that God shows you how special you are. There is to be a balance in the Christian life. Paul said, for to me to live is Christ. Philippians 1 verse 21. He considered the Christian life to be like military service. To him, ministry was a very serious matter and time was tight. Every opportunity must be used. On the other hand, there must be a chance to encourage, to strengthen, and to build up. This is what Barnabas did. Another figure who helped to develop Mark's character so he became useful to Paul was the Apostle Peter who considered him as his son. The house of Mark's mother was used as a meeting place. Many things happened but God turned them all to good. Two mission teams were formed instead of one. According to history, Mark had his own ministry as well. He wrote the Gospel of Mark under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mark was the first missionary to Egypt. He went to the city of Alexandria. Thus, the ministry spread from Paul to Mark, to Barnabas, to Silas. Thus the ministry multiplied and continued to many other generations. God turns all things to good and uses differences for His glory and His kingdom. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Christ's love still compels everyone. You may have failed once. You may have fallen. No one was there to support or assist you. I urge you right now to lift your eyes up to Jesus Christ. You may have reached an impasse. Perhaps sin has distorted your life. You can no longer think clearly. Your life has hit rock bottom. Look up to the divine hand. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God loves you and has a great plan for your life. He wants you to be free and to cast all your anxiety on Him. I pray that this program will be a blessing to your life. Not every argument or dispute results in separation. The spirit of love and forgiveness reigned over Barnabas and Paul. Pray that God will use us to reach further goals for His glory. God bless you. See you tomorrow. And Lord willing, the day after tomorrow.